Good morning, evening, or afternoon, everybody. It's Gago coming at you with another video. So today's video is going to be a little controversial because we're going to be talking about whether you should play Alliance or Horde for the hardcore experience. And now me personally, for the entirety of Classic, I have been Horde and I have played the Horde heroes because I have truly enjoyed it. Um, I like their racials, their... Uh, pretty much just everything about it as well as getting war chief's blessing was really nice when we were talking about og classic um it's just such a good buff and while you can't get on the alliance it's an epic pain in the butt to do so but anyway before we get into the video be sure to like comment and subscribe everything you guys do helps my channel grow helps me get discovered and helps me help as many people as possible which is the entire point of my channel so without further ado let's get into the video so the biggest differences between the Alliance and Horde, when you take the PvP aspect out of it, which is what we do for Hardcore, there's no PvP in it, is going to be obviously their questing areas and zones, sort of their natural progression, and which is easier. And then um, obviously the biggest one, Paladins versus Shamans. And then finally, racials and sort of class stuff. So I'm going to take the time to go through all these and sort of give you my thoughts and opinions on which could be more beneficial when we're looking at the game from a hardcore perspective. So the very first one we're going to talk about is alliance and sort of humans. Now humans get diplomacy as a passive, which increases reputation gains by 10%. They get mace specialization and sword specialization, which increases their skills by five with maces and swords, which is really, really powerful. Um, having that extra five allows you to hit targets way more often, especially when you're a melee, like a warrior, a paladin, or a rogue. It is very beneficial. And since we're getting the phase six launch, there are a lot of really powerful uh, maces and swords in the end game that you can go to. And so that helps a ton. Um, then they also get human spirit, which increases their spirit by 5%. Spirit is always great for questing. It lets you uh, regen your health and mana, which can be very nice if you're ever in some sticky situations. That one tick could help you a lot. And then finally, they get Perception, which dramatically increases Stealth Detection. That's kind of useless for Hardcore. Um, next, we have the Dwarves. Now, they are, get Fine Treasure, Frost Resistance, Gun Spec, and Stone Form. Now, Fine Treasure and Frost Resistance are practically useless. Um, it might help you out. But the big one is gun spec. If you're a hunter and using guns, especially since we're getting the phase six, you're not going to be locked into that MC bell. But stone form could save your life. It grants immunity to bleed, poison, and disease, as well as increases your armor for 10%. This is really good in PvE situations. just makes you tankier. And so if you're a paladin or warrior, um, mainly a paladin, I wouldn't really be a warrior or anything other than human. But, you know, for paladins, it can be very nice and helpful in hardcore. Next, we have the Night Elves. Um, honestly, Night Elves are kind of eh when it comes to all of the uh, passives and stuff that they have. Not very useful because their biggest one is the Wisp one. And that is just completely useless in Hardcore because the entire point is to not die. So the fact that they have a Wisp, it is just really, really bad. Then they get increased dodge chance. Nice. Uh, Shadow Meld can't really be used in combat, so that is also a dead one because it, um, it, like, it's not a dead one, but it's never going to save your life, really. Um, so, and then resistance to nature damage, it's whatever, it's nothing crazy. Then Gnome, we have, they may escape from speed altering effects, which is Escape Artist. They have increased int, they are resistant to arcane damage, and engineering skill. All of these are really good for Gnomes, especially with trading enabled. It allows you to go that tailoring engineering combo if you're a mage or a warlock. Um, even some rogues can go it. Um, just for the safety of Escape Artists, that can save your life so many times in Hardcore. Um, definitely a huge thing to consider when you're going a gnome. And then the int increase by 5% pretty much makes all mage and warlock players want to be a gnome just for that extra int, which is extra damage and mana. So that's it for the alliance races. Let's talk about the horde ones. 
We have Orc. This is pretty much Orc and Troll are Biss pretty much on the Horde side. I'll just go ahead and say that. The Axe Specialization, the Increased Damage to Pets, Resisting Stuns. They have a 25% chance to just resist any stun effect, which count so many mobs stun you in Classic WoW that that could save your life 25% of the time. Obviously, hopefully you're not in that situation. And then the ability to pop Blood Fury can allow them to enrage and just really start to do a ton of damage, which can also be very, very helpful. Um, let's talk about Undead. Honestly, the only thing really good about them is going to be increased underwater breathing because it has so little uh, time. You can cannibalize, which can help you, but I, I really wouldn't go Undead, honestly. I'd pretty much be an Orc or a Troll when we're talking Horde. Um, but that's just their uh, passives. Then Torrens may stomp nearby opponents, sending them have more health, herbalism, and resistant to nature damage. These are all good passives. They're just not better than Orc. Like, if anything, you're going to be a Torrent, you should just be an Orc. Because Orcs are just better at everything. The only time you should be a Torrent is if you want to be a Druid. Because they're the only one that can be a Druid. Similar with Night Elf, the only on the Alliance, the only time you want to be a Night Elf is if you're a Druid. Um, and then we have Troll. Now, Trolls get Berserking, which is the most insane passive in Classic World Warcraft. I made every character I had a Troll that could be a Troll because Berserk increases their attack speed. Nothing gives you the haste like it does. It is 10 to 30%. It is a bloodlust in Classic World of Warcraft um, if you're at that low health point. And then you have Regeneration increased. You do more damage to beasts. And then Throwing and Bow Skill is all right for a Hunter. Um, but in more damage to beasts, the increased regeneration is insane too because it stacks with spirit. So, like, you can just be regening tons of health if you have a decent amount of spirit. Um, I'd recommend a troll for anyone going shaman, priest, um, or a mage on the horde. So, that's it for the classes and their racials. Just giving you a general overview of what situations you could use those in. Next, I want to talk about the leveling experience. So, is a fact that alliance has more quests more complete lines because in the original game they worked on eastern kingdoms first and then they did kalimdor um examples of this is like towards the end of horde you look at ajara you look at silithus you look at those other kalimdor in-game zones where the quest lines just kind of die out they run out they just sort of ran out of time with those and it doesn't review really fulfilled now as far as the leveling goes um, with Alliance and Horde, both have very nice paths. They're kind of well drawn out. Everyone knows it nowadays, so the paths aren't really the same. And then it comes down to just the Alliance has more quests. The Horde does have to grind a little. The Horde do not have enough quests to hit level 60. This excludes all XP from killing mobs. Generally, you do hit 60 with quests up um, if you do them all just from the sheer amount of mobs you have to kill. But that is a factual statement that I have seen thrown around quite a bit. Next, we come to the final thing, Paladins vs. Shamans. And when we're talking hardcore, and this can even be reflected when we look at the end of the classic raiding experience, what guilds were the top ones for speedruns, clearing, and stuff like that. It was the Alliance, and I think Paladins are so much better for hardcore because they can give you might which is 10 percent attack power they can give you kings which is 10 percent uh stats and they can give you salvation which will save you so many times you have no idea some of my favorite raids were once they gave us the tbc pre-patch and we were doing next with paladins on the horde and having salvation it was so so incredibly fun i really enjoyed it so when we talk about paladins versus shamans, shamans do get totems. They are pretty good as well. It's just on hardcore, you're going to be running around in the world, tons of in-world content. People are going to be throwing up buffs like crazy. Shamans, unfortunately, you got to be in their group to get their buffs. So just for that reason alone, having paladins and their just ability to save lives in classic WoW and the entire point is not dying that is why I would say you're going to have a much better time playing the Alliance uh, over the Horde here in Hardcore Classic. And as you guys know, if you've seen any of my content, it's been Horde all the way um, since you know the beginning of this channel and Classic WoW. So it, it, it took a lot for me to admit that I do think Alliance is better because of Paladins and just looking at everything and what it takes. So... Anyway, guys, I hope this helps you a lot on your journeys. I hope 
all this information has helped you out a bunch and i hope to see you on the hardcore servers when they go live here in a few days so until next time i'll see you later Bye bye if you made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much for watching. It truly means a lot to me. If you happen to find anyone that you know would also benefit from watching this video, please, please, please share it with them. It helps me out a ton and allows me to keep doing what I love every single day, and that is gaming and sort of helping people any way that I can. So finally, thank you so much, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Goodbye.